This is section 5.2. We're going to translate English phrases to algebraic expressions. This is how we approach story problems. So before we begin, my camera operator and I worked on finding some uh, terminology that we're going to have to be familiar with. So Jane and I spent a little bit of time brainstorming. And maybe we missed a few. Maybe you can come up with them on your own. But we're going to find the English words that we use to describe these mathematical operations. So first, we looked at this one and said, well, this means addition. So if we're talking about addition, that means to add or to plus. Sometimes we'll see the word sum or combine together. If we're bringing two things together, we're going to add them together. Or maybe we see the word increase. So again, that list would be add or addition, plus, sum, combine, together, or increase. Sometimes maybe even the word total. All right, when we see this symbol, we know that this is subtraction. So that would be one English phrase. Or we might see difference. We might see take away. We might see the word decrease, or less, or minus. Any of those English words describe this mathematical operation. Now here, we have different op uh, operators that indicate the same thing. Multiplication. Uh, we might have uh, product, times, and the word of. So if I have five of six items, I would have a total of 30 items. So we look for those words to multiply or to find the product or times or of. Here we have division. And I showed a fraction here, because that means division. And so does this symbol here, division. So division would be one word. Quotient is a frequent word. Uh, or divide or divisible by. Sometimes even the word per, like percent, means to divide by 100. Then when we have exponents, that's this value right here. We have a base and an exponent. Some of the English words that describe exponents are, of course, the word exponent. Maybe we use the word power. Maybe we use the word raised to. Um, and sometimes we have specific words that specify an actual numerical power, such as squared. That means to the second power. Or cubed, which means to the third power. So when we see these terms, they describe one of these operations. So let's actually look at some examples and uh, translate them from the English language into an algebraic expression. So the first one says the product of 3 and x. So the product, I recognize that to mean multiplication. The multiplication of 3 and x, which says 3 times x. And if I want to simplify that, I could. It's just 3x, right? Because we know, we know that this means multiplying. So does this. This just means multiplication through adjacency. All right, let's look at the next one. 3 added to a number. Well, added, I know what mathematical operation that is. It is that plus sign, right? 3 added to a number. Well, I don't know what the number is, so I have to assign a variable. So I'm going to say 3 plus 3 added to a number. 3 added to a number. And that's exactly what that says. Here's a special word, twice. That means a special type of multiplication, multiplying by 2. And I recognize that. That's one we didn't put on our list. Twice the sum of x and 1. Here's where we have to be careful, because we're not multiplying 2 times x or 2 times 1. It's twice the sum. We have to multiply 2 times the addition. So essentially, what, when I see something like that, it's twice the sum. I put that sum in parentheses. The sum of what? x and 1. So when I read this, it says twice the sum of x and 1. All right, <clears throat> let's look at this one and see how is this different. This says twice x plus 1. If we think about this in terms of order of operations, we would essentially multiply before we add. Twice x plus 1. So we identify this means addition. This means multiplying by 2. 2x two plus 1, twice x plus 1. And that's what that says. All right, let's look at some more examples. 
This one says 5 squared plus the product of x and y. So 5 squared plus the product of x and y, x times y, or I can just write it xy. 5 squared plus the product of x and y. Here we have the quotient. The quotient tells me to divide. I recognize that. Of a number and 6. When it comes to division, we have to identify the numerator and the denominator. And we usually identify them in that order. So when I read this, I translate it in that order. The quotient of a number, I'll assign that a variable, x, and 6. So this is the one that comes first. This is the one that comes second. Just like you read from left to right, you also read one line at a time, top to bottom. So I'm going to write it left to right, top to bottom, just like I would read. So the quotient of a number and 6, the quotient of a number and 6. All right, let's look at the next one. They get a little bit more complex because we're integrating more operations. This one says twice the difference of a number raised to the third power in 7. So when I translate this, I know twice means I'm going to multiply by 2, twice the difference. Well, the difference means subtraction, but I haven't figured out of what yet. Well, the difference of a number which is raised to the third power. A number raised to a power. I recognize raised means an exponent. And so does power. So raised to the power, the third power. Third is 3. So we identified that English word. Third means 3. And 7. So this says twice the difference of a number raised to the third power and 7. They can get pretty complicated. But we can hopefully see the point in this is that if we had to write every mathematical equation out in English language, you can imagine how time consuming that would be. We have these series of symbols and operators so that we can make uh, the math a little bit less time consuming. All right, the next one says the quotient of 5 and the sum of a number and 2. So we have to think of this as a, like maybe a compound sentence. The quotient of 5. So the quotient of 5, because this number came first, and the sum. Well, and the sum, well, sum tells me to add. And this would be the next value. I'm going to have the quotient of 5 and the sum of a number and 2. A number, I'll assign that x, and 2. So we're able to simplify that. So what would be good practice is to take expressions like this and try to write them out in the English language. Write it backwards. If you can do it from this to that, can you do it from an expression into the English language? That would be great practice. And I know you've seen many of things like this in your homework. So keep practicing. Do your homework. And thank you for watching.